Hello, this video is about the design of a FIFO controller which is capable of writing a data word into a FIFO. This video will be a preparatory video for the next video which is about how to integrate user-defined custom IPs into the block design environment in Vivado. So we will be designing a FIFO write controller in this class and this module will be used as a custom IP to realize a simple FIFO based system in the next video. So in this session we will be designing a FIFO write controller which is triggered by a host and on receiving the trigger will write a single data word into the FIFO. So before proceeding further, let us see how the environment looks like. So you have a FIFO write controller module which is interfaced to a FIFO on the one hand and on the host side there is a single signal which we may call as say do write word. This is a single line which is used for triggering a single write transaction into the FIFO. Now you might be wondering why why do we need a bridge between the host and the FIFO? Why can't the host directly communicate with the FIFO? There are two main reasons for this. Typically, the peripherals that are interfaced to a host like a processor may have different interface signals. So it may not be possible to directly connect the host interface to the peripheral. So we need an intermediary like a controller which can understand both the language of the processor and that of the peripheral. The second reason is that Typically, the peripherals are much slower than the processor. Therefore, if the processor is directly communicating with the peripheral, then the processor host will be waiting hundreds and perhaps thousands of cycles trying to transfer data to the peripheral. As a result, in any processor based system, access to peripherals like FIFOs or memories or IO devices will be through interface controllers. So here we are trying to do a simple write controller for the FIFO. You can see that I have restricted the functionality to just writing a data word into the FIFO. The reason is the objective per se here is not to design a comprehensive controller for the FIFO. Rather, our objective is to introduce the students to the process of designing a typical peripheral controller. Because you might have seen in the Vivado repository 
that there is a FIFO controller which is available. So the sole purpose of doing this design is to create a custom controller and give a feel of how to design a peripheral controller. So if you understand this process, you can un you can later on design a controller for any peripheral. It may be a memory, it may be a multi-port memory or it may be any new peripheral. So once you understand the functioning of the peripheral, you can adapt the same procedure for designing a controller for any peripheral. So coming back to the 5 write controller, before we proceed further, we will first list out the tasks that are expected to be done by the 5 write controller. So the first task is the 5 write controller is triggered by a 0 to 1 transition in the control line to rightward. So you might be wondering why we are looking for a 0 to 1 transition. Why not look for a level 0 or a level 1? The problem is if we use a level for triggering this transaction, then we don't really know when to stop the transaction. Because the processor may hold the level at 1 or 0 for several clock cycles. So after we finish the transaction, we don't really know whether the intention is to continue the transaction or not. So in a simple interface, it will be better to look for a 0 to 1 transition. So if the processor wants to repeat the write, it has to initiate another 0 to 1 transaction in this input. So when the FIFO write controller sees a 0 to 1 transaction in the do write word input, it starts going about initiating a write transaction in the FIFO. So how does it do that? Typically we know that there is a write enable control signal in any FIFO. So if the controller sees a 0 to 1 transition in the input do write word, it will assert the write enable of the FIFO for one clock provided the FIFO is not full. So if the FIFO is not full, the controller will initiate a write into the FIFO, a write of a single word into the FIFO by asserting the write enable for exactly one clock because you are not supposed to assert the write enable for more clocks because it will start updating more than one location in the FIFO. Of course, you can see that the write enable is asserted only if the FIFO is not full. If the FIFO is not full, then there is room for data to be written. If the FIFO is full, then the write cannot take place and this is again intimated to the processor by means of another status signal, which we may call as write error. So the next task is if the FIFO is full, if the FIFO is full, an error signal an error signal is asserted to notify the host 
that the write has failed. So these are the three tasks that are expected from the FIFO. Now to accomplish this set of objectives, first we should finalize the periphery, the peripheral pins of the FIFO right controller. So let us see how it is done. So we will draw a pin diagram of the FIFO which will list out all the pins that are going to be part of the periphery of the FIFO right controller. So that is going to be the next step. So we have the FIFO right controller which is triggered by the do right word input then of course we have the system reset and the system clock and for initiating the right transaction into the FIFO the controller also has to monitor the full status signal of the FIFO because without knowing the full status the controller cannot initiate a write into the FIFO. And there are going to be two outputs. One is of course the write enable which will be connected to the write enable of the FIFO. And there will be one more output which is a status output called write error. This will be interfaced to the host. So whenever there is a failure of a write transaction on account of the FIFO being full, this condition will be notified to the host by asserting the write error status signal exactly for one clock. So this sums up the periphery of the FIFO write controller. So now that we have finalized the peripheral pins of the FIFO controller, the next step will be to design the controller. So in this case, we will be designing a state machine for implementing the controller functions. So we'll now see how the state machine will be designed. Of course, we have to keep in mind that the functionality of the controller is restricted to writing a single word into the FIFO. It is not a comprehensive controller which can be used for either a read or a write access into the FIFO. The main purpose of designing this controller is to illustrate how a custom IP can be integrated into the Vivado block design environment. If you want a full FIFO controller, it is available in the Vivado IP repository. So here I am restricting the functionality only to a write because my objective is to give you a feel of how to design a peripheral controller. So I don't want the students to get carried away by the complexity of the functions. The aim is just to design a very simple peripheral controller. So now we will set about designing the state machine for the FIFO write controller. So the FIFO 
write controller state machine for those who are interested in uh, learning state machine design in depth I will be doing a separate video so here I am assuming that you are familiar with FSM concepts so we will keep in mind the functionality that is expected from the controller which we have listed out earlier that is the module has to monitor a control input do underscore write word and whenever there is a zero to one transition in this particular input it has to initiate a write operation into the FIFO provided the FIFO is not full so if the FIFO is not full the controller is expected to assert the write enable of the FIFO for one clock and thereby complete a single word write into the FIFO. If the FIFO is full, the controller is expected to exit the transaction by asserting an error output for exactly one clock period. So, there are two outputs involved in this transaction. One is the write enable output which will be asserted for exactly one clock if a valid write is possible. If the FIFO is full and a write is not possible, the transaction will be completed by asserting the error output. Now keeping these steps in mind and also keeping in mind the periphery, the peripheral pins of the FIFO, we will try to design the state machine that will realize the functionality of the controller. So we will now do an ASM chart. We will start with the default state which we will designate as idle. So in this state we have to assign the default values for the outputs. There are two outputs here. One is the write enable, w enable out. So this will be 0. I think the nomenclature which I have used in the periphery diagram is slightly different. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And uh, the second output which is the error output also is assigned its reset value which is 0. So this is the default idle state of the controller. Now when does this controller move out of this idle state? So this will be determined by the control input do underscore write word. So the controller constantly monitors this input and it basically looks for a 0 to 1 transition. Please keep that in mind. We are not looking for a level of 0 or a level of 1. We are basically looking for a 0 to 1 transition. So as a first step in a 0 to 1 transition, first we have to establish if the input is at level 0. If it is not at level 0, we will again go back to the idle state. If the input is seen to be at level 0, then we will go to a new state called wait. So in this state, we will be waiting for the input to change to 1 because only when there is a 0 to 1 transition, we can initiate further action. Therefore, in the wait state, for every clock edge, we will be monitoring again the control input do underscore right word. And now we will be checking whether do underscore right word is 1 or not. So if it is not 1, still the level is 0 and there is no transition. So we will be returning to the wait state 
and when there is a one seen at the do right word input it means that now we have established a valid 0 to 1 transition so if we see a 1 at the do underscore right word input when we are waiting in the wait state it means that there is a valid 0 to 1 transition and hence now we can initiate a right transition to the FIFO. So for initiating a right transition into the FIFO the first step is of course we need to determine whether the FIFO is full or not. If the FIFO is not full we can proceed with the right. So if the result of this decision box is a no we can proceed with the right operation so how do we do that so if the FIFO is not full we move on to a new state called right enable w e n in this state Please remember that we have to assert the output wl underscore w enable wen underscore out. This output has to be asserted. So when we assert the output, we will be triggering a write into the FIFO. We will remain in this state exactly for one clock. That means we will return from this state we will return from this state unconditionally we will return from this state unconditionally which will ensure that the state machine remains in this state exactly for one clock so where should you move from this state so from this state we have to move again to the checking of the do right word input because there may be another there may be another uh, uh, trigger from the host for initiating another right operation so therefore we go to the point where we are checking for a zero in the do right word input so that completes a valid write operation into the FIFO now what if the FIFO is full so we go to a different branch if the FIFO is full we go to a different branch that is another state which is an error state in this state we will be asserting an output write error underscore out and similar to the write enable state we will be again returning to the point where we will check for the do underscore right word input so that completes the design of the state machine now uh, before we proceed further there is one more point that uh, we need to keep in mind that is we have mentioned that the write enable and write error states remain only for one clock and the corresponding outputs the write enable and write error outputs they have to be asserted only for one clock so we either revert to the idle state or to the wait state 
when we come out of the wn or w error states that dip, that of course depends on the state of the do underscore right word input so in the idle state we have already indicated that the outputs will be reset to their default values but we don't really know whether the state machine will be returning to the idle state or the wait state it basically depends on the status of the do underscore right word input so in order to ensure that the outputs remain exactly for one clock we also have to explicitly deassert these two outputs to their default values in the wait state also i hope you understand because if you don't do that if the state machine happens to return to the wait state from either the right enable or the right error states then it will uh, the the outputs will still remain at zero unless they are deasserted in the wait state so this ensures that the outputs get asserted exactly for only one clock regardless of the state to which the fsm returns after the output assertion so now we are done with the design of the state machine so you can see that it's a very simple state machine since we have restricted the functionality to a, just a single write uh, we have been able to keep the state machine very simple so there are uh, four states therefore we will be requiring uh, two bits for encoding these states the next step will be to model this state machine in verilog so we will be modeling this fsm as a more machine and we will be using a modeling style where the outputs are registered so i'll be discussing more about these ideas in a separate video on fsm design here i am assuming that the students have basic background in fsm design concepts and fsm modeling in verilog so now we will move on to modeling this particular fsm in verilog now that the state machine of the controller is uh, designed the next step will be to model it in a uh, verilog and simulate it in the vivado environment so now i have the vivado tool uh, opened in my computer so the first step will be to create a project so we will give the we will assign some meaningful name to the project say vivado custom ip and uh, since we are going to create an rtl code we will retain the same selection of the project type default part you can specify the board or uh, fpga that you intend to uh, implement the design on so let me choose the basis 3 board
so that finishes uh, creation of the new project the next step will be to write the verilog code for the state machine so for for that we have to first create the source file we can use the add sources option you just right click in the project manager window and you will get the add sources option so we can choose the add or create design sources since we are creating a new file we have to choose the create file option so i am giving the name fifo write controller fifo wr ct lr fifo wr underscore ct lr it's a very log file that i am i propose to create so when you specify this file it will take you to the uh, hdl wizard where you can create the module automatically but i don't want to use the hdl wizard so i'll just quit it so you have the source file that we have created here it is still specified as a non module file because i have not added any code to the file so let me open the file so it opens the file in the hdl editor and you can see the blank file now so we will start with uh, writing the model for the state machine module we have the inputs reset clock pull and the do right word input and you have the two outputs write enable and write error so the inputs are going to be clock reset pull and do do right word and the output pins are w enable out and uh, w error out and since we are going to assign these outputs inside a sequential block we have to declare these two outputs as reg and uh, we need two variables for holding the next state and present state information so these variables are respectively declared as ps and ns for present state and next state so when we designed the state machine we saw that it is having four states therefore we need two variables for encoding the states so we are done with the declarative part now we will start the actual uh, state machine itself so as you know there will be two parts for the state machine there will be a sequential part which is controlled by the clock and reset and there will be a combinational part which will determine the next state so first we will do the sequential part
which is uh, controlled by the system clock and system reset. In this reset block, we will specify the default values of all the variables. So the present state will be idle and we are assuming that the encoding 0, 0 is assigned for the idle. So maybe we can put a comment here. So we will mention the encoding for each state here for weight the encoding is 1 For weight, the encoding is 1 and uh, for write enable, it is 1, 1, that is 3 and for write error, we are assuming that the encoding is 2 or 1, 0. There you are. So, the default value is the reset value is the idle state and we also have to assign the reset values of the outputs. Next, we will go to the block part of this block. So, the main thing that happens in this block is the updating of the present state with the next state information. The next state will be decided by the combinational block and it will be an input to the sequential block. So at every clock edge, the present state will be updated with the next state information. Since we are uh, uh, modeling the state machine with registered outputs, the output or the outputs are also assigned here. So we know that the write enable output is assigned when we go to the WEN state, which means if the next state is equal to WEN, that is encoded as 2 bit 1 1, then we will be asserting the write enable output similarly if there is an error condition that is if the FIFO is full then we will be asserting the W error output by going to the W E R state W E R R state rather so these two outputs are assigned in the sequential block because we want the outputs to be registered and we are using the next state information for assigning the outputs because we want to save one clock. You will understand more about this in the video on state machine uh, modeling which I will post shortly.
we are still not done there is one more task that is left we saw that while we while modeling the state machine we saw that uh, when the outputs are asserted either the w enable or the w error when we come out of the state we will either revert to the idle state or to the wait state so we have to ensure that these outputs are deasserted when the state machine enters these states of course when the state machine enters the idle state uh, of course we have to explicitly deassert the output in in both these cases yes so before completing this block we will have to do this assignment also that is if the next state happens to be either idle which is 0 0 or or wait which is modeled as uh, 0 1 in either of these cases you have to assign the or rather reassign the outputs to their reset states or default states this is very important because we want either of these outputs to get asserted only for a single clock especially the right enable because if the right enable is not deasserted after the wen state is exited then this particular output will remain asserted for more than one clock and this will result in more than one write transaction to the fifo which is not what is intended so with this we complete the modeling of the sequential part of the state machine of course when whenever you are modeling all these blocks ensure that the ifs are properly enclosed with begin and end and also the always blocks So now we are done with the sequential block. The next step is to specify the state changes according to the inputs for various present states. And this is done by the next state block, which is a combinational block. So since the next state block is a combinational block, we have to ensure that all the inputs of this block are part of the sensitivity list. So the next state basically depends on the present state and the inputs. Therefore, the present state variable, the PS, and the inputs, there are two of them. One is the do write word input and the other is the full input. Both these inputs form part of the sensitivity list of the always block and uh, we will start the block with the default assignment whenever we have a combinational block good pro coding practice dictates that we should always have a default assignment for the output which is the next state in this case this will ensure that there are no unintended latch inferences. So next, we will go on to the next state specification for various uh, present states. So we will do it through a case statement. So first we specify the case where the present state is idle. So when the present state is idle, 
we move out of the state we move out of the idle state based on the do right word input if this input is zero the next state becomes the wait state which is modeled as zero one that's it so this corresponds to the next state coding for the state variable idle so you can notice one point here i am not specifying the else condition for this particular branch i don't need to because i have always i have already given a default assignment so that even if i don't specify the else branch of the subsequent if statements or subsequent branching statements there is not going to be any unintended latch inference so next we we will model what happens when we are in the wait state again in the wait state the transition is based on the do right word input so basically in the wait state we look for a zero to one transition the zero transition the, the zero level of the input has been already established so we will move out of the state if we see a if we see a one in the do right word input so when the do right word input is one we will move on to the either we will move on to either the right enable state or the uh, right error state so basically that will depend on the status of the fifo full input so if full is deasserted if full is deasserted the next state will be the the next state will be the right enable state if the full status is asserted it is an error condition so we will move on to the right error state which is modeled as 0 1 or decimal 2 we will move on to this particular state and assert the error status output so maybe we can also fix a comment here next state is either w enable or w r depending on full status that's it it always helps to uh, provide short comments short meaningful comments at appropriate places so next we need to specify what happens when we are either in the right enable state or right error state so we know that in both these states we go to the same place we go to the point where we check the do right word input so we can specify these we can specify the transition for these two states together so we can specify the transitions for these two states together by separating them with a comma so again the transition is based on the do right word input if this input is a zero we go to the wait state because we are looking for a 0 to 1 transition else else we will go to the idle state 
else we'll go to the idle state so this specifies the transition next state transition rules for the write enable or write error states and uh, the default even though it is already specified we will specify it again because some of the compilers they insist on a default branch for the case statement so we are done with the next state specification we will close the combinational next state decoder module and the state machine there we are so we are done with the state machine for the FIFO controller now let us see whether there are any issues with the compiler go to the project manager uh, window oh yes there are some syntax errors let me see what they are it says there is a syntax error near line one Oh yes, I have done a very fundamental mistake here. I have not specified the name of the module. Pyfo write underscore ctlr. That's a very fundamental mistake. Okay, this error has been fixed. I think we are still not clear there are some more errors let us see what they are there is another syntax error in uh, near line 14 so yeah i have not included uh, i have not put two equal symbols inside the if condition so let us see whether there is any repetition of the same mistake i don't see any So some more errors line 31 yes I have omitted to put a semicolon Quite a lot of errors line number 34 it reports that there is a syntax error near else again the issue is with the semicolon So one more error in uh, line 34 
yes the error was due to not properly closing this particular branch here so that has been fixed and you can see that uh, there are no more syntax errors so the source has now been added to the project successfully now what remains is to write a test bench and simulate the module to verify its functionality so for simulating the module we will write a test bench and add the test bench to the project as a simulation source and use the built-in simulator in Vivado for simulating the module and verifying the functionality. Therefore, we will see how we can write a test bench for uh, verifying this particular module. So, now that the controller FSM has been coded and uh, added successfully to the project, the next step will be to verify the functionality of this FSM. So, for that, we have to write a test bench for verifying this particular state machine. So, for verifying a design in Vivado, we will have to add the test bench as a source file, but with the difference that the source will be added as a simulation source. So, again we will go to the add sources and instead of adding the source as a design source, we will add the test bench as a simulation source. So, we will create this file afresh since we have not created the file yet. We will name it as tb underscore 5 right controller. So, again we will bypass the HDL wizard and we will directly move on to the test bench file so you can see that it opens up in the uh, project window so a module with the name tb underscore 54 write contro controller has been already added so we don't uh, typically uh, test bench is a portless module Now, we will have to add local signals for mapping onto the uh, module under test. So, corresponding to the two outputs, we will have to declare wires. These will be wires which will be mapped onto the two outputs of the module that we are going to test, which is the five four right controller and we will have to declare a, declare some register data types register signal types rather for the inputs because we have to assign values to these inputs and we can't assign values to the inputs unless we declare them as registers so these uh, signals include the do right word full clock and reset so you can see that I am declaring the signals with the same names as that of the ports declared in the original module which is to be verified of course it is not necessary that this has to be adhered to because the names can differ anyway for convenience it is better to declare the 
local signals with the same names as the ports to which they are going to map into so now we'll uh, declare an initial block in which we will be initializing all the signals so we will initialize the do write word signal to zero this is the signal which is going to map onto the do write word input of the uh, controller which we are going to verify similarly the full input the clock input and the reset input are all initialized to zero we are still not done we will assert the reset for a short while because since the state machine is a sequential circuit we have to initialize the state machine using the asynchronous reset so we will uh, assert the reset before proceeding further so after a delay of five time units maybe we can assert the reset and again at 15 time units or after a delay of again after a delay of uh, 10 time units we can deassert the reset input so this effectively pulses the reset for a short while and this will serve towards initializing the system initializing the entire sequential system the next part of the test bench will be the clock generation part so clock generation is by means of a perpetually active always block without a sensitivity list so we will be repeatedly toggling the clock input or clock signal by two different assignments which are separated by delays so this module can be used for generating the free running clock it's very important that this module this always block be included any in any uh, in the test bench for any sequential system so this block will now generate a free running clock and what is the period of the clock it is 10 plus 10 20 time units and the uh, duration of a particular uh, time unit will be decided by the Vivado simulation environment. It can be user defined. I mean, it can be set by the user. So we are done with the uh, generation of the free running clock. Now, the next step is to initiate the right transaction. So for initiating the right transaction we have to pulse the uh, right word do right word input for exactly one clock suppose we want to initiate the right for one clock we will have to pulse the do right word input for one clock and please remember that whenever we are verifying sequential circuits all the inputs unless they are asynchronous all the inputs are assumed to be synchronous so in the test bench also we have to assign them synchronized to the system clock so already we have generated a free running clock by means of the always block now we will be assigning the uh, right word input do right word input also under a block always block which is controlled by the same clock 
unless we do this if we assign the inputs under the initial block then we will get erroneous results which are not consistent with the behavior that is expected from a sequential block so this has to be always kept in mind while writing test benches for verifying sequential systems so here just to time the generation of the do right word signal i am just going to keep count of the number of clocks therefore i am going to declare an integer by the name count this is just for keeping track of the number of clocks it doesn't serve any other purpose so i am going to increment this count unconditionally at every clock and basically what i am going to do is i am waiting for some interval some number of clocks let us say 10 clocks and uh, after this interval has elapsed i am going to assert the right word control signal i am going to assert the right word do right word control signal and i am leaving it at that you might be wondering why i am not bringing it back to zero it is not really necessary because un unless i want to uh, simulate more transactions i can leave it at that if i am interested in simulating only a single right transaction i just need a single zero to one transaction so this pretty much serves my requirement i don't need to uh deassert it back to zero so the only task that is left is to uh instantiate the uh, fifo controller itself so we will have to instantiate the fifo controller so it always helps to have the module definition with you so that you don't you don't get wrong in the uh, mapping of the ports so just paste this module here and of course remove the module keyword just give an instance name f1 and you are done of course here i am not making an explicit mapping i am just making a positional mapping and since i have named all the local signals with the same name as the corresponding ports to which they are going to be mapped i don't need to do anything else so i am done with the instantiation of the module under test there we are so let us see whether uh, we can add this to the project and if there are any syntax errors that need to be corrected so i think there are no uh, errors in the test bench it is completely in order it is completely in order so now let us see if we can simulate this particular uh, module so it is pretty straightforward you can just go to simulation and you can choose this option so we can choose the first option that is the run behavioral simulation so we have the waveforms here let us take a look let us take a closer look so that we can make sense out of what is happening so the signals are a bit uh, zoomed out
yes maybe i'll just uh, okay so you can see that uh, the do right word input is undergoing a 0 to 1 transition at this point after the first few clocks uh, this transition is seen here and the state machine senses this transition at the next clock and it toggles the right enable out signal for exactly one clock so that is the behavior that is expected from the controller and of course the right enable is asserted only if the full input is deasserted so as far as the valid write operation is concerned we can see that the FIFO is behaving the FIFO controller is behaving along expected lines of course now what happens if the FIFO is full so for verifying that again we need to change the uh, test bench we'll go back to the test bench just make a small tweak and we can also verify the uh, case where the FIFO is full just go here initialize the FIFO to full instead of uh, not full you initialize the FIFO to full and you are done so again let us simulate the uh, design there you are so let us uh, see how things are changing now you still have the same uh, request the right request do underscore right word but now you can see that the w enable out is not active it is deasserted throughout the entire simulation and uh, when the right word is seen the state machine checks for the full status which is asserted and therefore it exits the transaction by asserting the w error out status output so we have verified both the basic functionalities of the uh, controller that is initiating a right transaction if the FIFO is not full and uh, exiting the operation with a error status if the FIFO is full so both the functionalities have been verified by this particular uh, uh, test bench of course you can uh, simulate lot of different transactions with the same test bench I am leaving it to you as an exercise what we have done is just verify the basic functionality that we had intended to incorporate in the FIFO controller now before closing just to be sure that everything is in order we will run the synthesis on this module to ensure that the synthesizability of this module is uh, in order of course we will not go any further towards the implementation because our intention is not to burn this controller into a into an FPGA board our intention is to use this as a custom IP in a Vivado block design so we'll just run synthesis just to uh, ensure that everything is fine from the point of view of synthesizability of the code so in fact I have done I had done this earlier so I'll just do it again so once the synthesis is complete this particular controller module is ready to be used as a custom IP in a Vivado 
block design. So you can see that the synthesis, the module is successfully synthesized. So we will not go any further in the FPGA implementation flow. So we are done with verifying the IP, verifying the custom IP. So with this, this particular session is completed. So we have successfully created an IP which can be used as a custom IP in a Vivado block design environment. So in the next video, I will be showing you how to uh, convert this IP definition into a custom IP and how to instantiate it in a Vivado block design environment. Thank you.